Comedy icon, Hollywood superstar, and one of the industry's nastiest bullies, a whole lot of people love Bill Murray, but a whole lot of people hate him too. Bill Murray made his directorial debut in the 1990 heist comedy Quick Change, which co-starred Gina Davis. In her memoir, Dying of Politeness, Davis recalled an uncomfortable meeting with Murray about the film. According to Davis, she had to resist his continual attempts to use an electric massager on her. She wrote, I said no multiple times, but he wouldn't relent. I would have had to yell at him and cause a scene if I was to get him to give up trying to force me to do it. The other men in the room did nothing to make it stop. Murray apparently responded to being rebuffed by being unnecessarily mean to Davis while filming. As she recalled in an interview with the On With Kara Swift, podcast, they were shooting on location when Murray began yelling at her, in full view of the crowd that had assembled to watch them film. She said, I was literally shaking. He got the opportunity to really put me in my place and really shamed me. Davis said that her perception of Murray was permanently altered by what he'd put her through, and she would never again be able to enjoy watching one of his performances. She told Vanity Fair, he comes off as an affable, fun-loving guy, and many times he was or could be, but once I had that experience, on day one of the movie, then everything about him after that was completely colored by knowing what lurks within. Long before he appeared on Buffy the Vampire Slayer or played Scott Evil in the Austin Powers movies, Seth Green was a child actor. While appearing on YouTube talk show Good Mythical Morning, he recalled one of those early gigs, appearing in a Saturday Night Live sketch featuring Bill Murray. According to Green, he encountered the actor backstage, where Murray, in Green's words, made a big fuss about him being in his seat. And I was like, that is absurd. I am sitting on the arm of this couch. There are several <laughs> lengths of this sofa kindly F off. Murray decided to teach the youngster a harsh lesson in the showbiz pecking order, given that he was a huge star and Green was just a kid. To get his point across, Murray allegedly grabbed Green and held him upside down by his ankles. He dangled me over a trash can and he was like, the trash goes in the trash can. And I was <laughs> screaming. The whole thing came to a painful conclusion when Murray released his grip, sending Green crashing headfirst into the trash can. I was horrified. <laughs> I ran away, hid under the table in my dressing room, and like just cried. Bill Murray co-starred with Richard Dreyfuss in the 1991 comedy What About Bob, and it's fair to say their working relationship was hardly a love fest. Murray later confirmed to Entertainment Weekly that they hadn't gotten along, but it was Dreyfuss who provided a disturbing anecdote about their time together on set. He told Yahoo Entertainment, he was an Irish drunken bully is what he was. Dreyfuss recalled that the inebriated comedian exploded when he suggested some script changes to him. He told the outlet, and he put his face next to me, nose to nose, and he screamed at the top of his lungs, everyone hates you, you are tolerated. That was only the warm up act too, with Murray following up by hurling a heavy glass ashtray at his co-star. Dreyfus told his interviewer, He threw it at my face from closer than you are, and it weighed about three quarters of a pound, and he missed me. He tried to hit me. I got up and left. Murray has since suggested that he deliberately tried to get under his co-star's skin as a form of method acting. In a 1991 interview with Deseret News, he said, While he was talking, I got in real close to crowding. I put my head on his shoulder, screamed into his ear, and did all sorts of annoying things. Some of that was even in the script. No, wait, none of that was in script. I made it all up. Director and producer McGee worked with Bill Murray on the 2000 action movie Charlie's Angels. In a 2009 interview with The Guardian, McGee bragged about getting into physical altercations with the actors he's worked with. He said, I don't think there's been a film I've made where there hasn't been some kind of physical fight. I mean, I've been headbutted by an A-list star, square in the head. An inch later and my nose would have been obliterated. When asked to reveal that particular thespian's identity, McGee initially hesitated. Finally, he admitted, it was Bill Murray. You know, it's a passionate industry. When he was asked about McGee's claims during an interview with The Times, Murray denied that that the incident had ever happened. He declared, that's bullshit. That's complete crap. I don't know why he made that story up. He has a very active imagination. Murray went on to diss the director and he held nothing back, adding, no, he deserves to die. He should be pierced with a lance, not headbutted. It appears that Bill Murray's time as host of Saturday Night Live in the 1990s was fraught with tension and conflict. In an interview on Sirius XM's Jim Norton and Sam Roberts radio show, SNL star Rob Schneider spoke about Murray's attitude on set. He's super nice to fans. He wasn't very nice to us. Interesting. He hated us on Saturday Night Live when he hosted. He did. Wow. Absolutely hated us. Chris Farley in particular took the brunt of Murray's disdain. He hated Chris Farley with a passion, like seething looking at him. Schneider claimed that he wasn't entirely sure of the reason for the animosity between the two comedians, but theorized it could have originated in Farley's obsessive emulation of John Belushi's substance abusing, out-of-control behavior. This isn't entirely implausible, given that both Belushi and Farley died of drug-related causes at the age of 33. And that wasn't all. Really hated Sandler, too. Oh, who yeah. Murray? Murray. Hated him. Still, Schneider took solace in his belief that Murray hated him a little less than the rest of the cast. The least of the hate was to me. Oh, I'm that's like, nice. I took great pleasure in that he hated me less. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's my hero. 
Lucy Liu was joined by Drew Barrymore and Cameron Diaz for Charlie's Angels, with Bill Murray playing their handler Bosley. While appearing on the Los Angeles Times Asian Enough podcast, Liu recalled rehearsing a scene that Murray had allegedly rewritten without telling anyone. She soon began to notice he was making offhanded insults that seemed to be aimed at her. Liu recalled, I was like, wow, he seems like he's looking straight at me. Uncertain whether what she felt was happening was actually happening, she decided to confront him. Before long, she said, it had become what she called a one-on-one -on -one communication. Finding the language he was using to be, in her words, inexcusable and unacceptable, she decided to call him out, even though she was much less well-known than any of her co-stars. Lou said, I stood up for myself and I don't regret it, because no matter how low on the totem pole you may be or wherever you came from, there's no need to condescend or to put other people down. In a subsequent interview with the Times, Murray appeared to defend his behavior, albeit without referencing Lou by name. He said, look, I will dismiss you completely if you are unprofessional in working with me. When our relationship is professional and you're not getting that done, forget it. Solange Knowles made her Saturday Night Live debut in 2016 when she performed her hit Don't Touch My Hair. Bill Murray was in attendance, as was TV writer and producer Judd McMayard. In a tweet posted years later, Mayard claimed to have witnessed Murray behaving inappropriately toward Knowles. She wrote, Your yearly reminder that I saw Bill Murray put both his hands into Solange's scalp after asking her three times if her hair was a wig or not. After the post went viral, Mayard offered some elaboration, claiming that Murray had insisted on touching her hair immediately after her set. She said, She had just finished performing that song in SNL when did it. That's the audacity of whiteness. While Knowles never officially said anything on this subject, her fans assumed she'd confirm the story when she liked Mayard's tweets about the incident. Jay Farrow was a member of the Saturday Night Live cast when he ran into Bill Murray, who was hanging around backstage at the time. During an appearance on Shannon Sharp's Club Shay Shay podcast, Farrow recalled the meeting. He's not even hosting. He's not hosting this week, he's just there. Murray, who Farrow claimed was inebriated at the time, began needling him, which soon escalated to insults. Murray repeatedly called Farrow fat boy before approaching him and hitting him over and over in the same place on his body. At a certain point, Farrow grew so annoyed by this that he decided to pick Murray up and body slam him WWE style into a sofa. Drunk out of his mind. Yeah. No, no, no recollection question. probably of right. this whatsoever. Right. But I slammed him. According to Farrow, his own personal experience with Murray seemed to mirror all the other negative anecdotes that had started to leak out, alleging a pattern of bad behavior. And now all them stories are coming out about Bill Murray? Yes, yeah. I, you can confirm them. That man is something, something up with him. Chevy Chase became the breakout star during the first season of Saturday Night Live before exiting partway through the following season. When he returned to host in the show's third season, he was reportedly loathed by his former co-stars. Bill Murray, who joined the show as his replacement, was particularly displeased with Chase, leading to a now legendary backstage fistfight between the two. As detailed in Saturday Night, a backstage history of Saturday Night Live, tension between Chase and Murray had been building up all week. At one point, the two exchanged insults before finally throwing punches at each other, right as the show was about to go live. Decades later, Later, Chase discussed the altercation during an interview with Time. He said, I discovered later it was with the instigation of John Belushi, who apparently was a little bit jealous that I had become the standout guy the first year, when John felt he deserved to. Speaking with Empire, Murray also looked back on their brief battle, insisting that the passage of time had given the whole thing far more weight than it deserves. Murray said, It was really a Hollywood fight, a don't touch my face kind of thing. Just a few years later, the pair co starred in the classic golf comedy Caddyshack, so nobody's feelings could have been hurt too much. Bill Murray and Harold Ramis were friends and frequent collaborators, having known each other since their days in the Second City Improv Troupe. When Ramis directed Murray in the beloved 1993 comedy Groundhog Day, however, their creative differences led to bitter clashes that created a serious rift in their friendship. Communication between the two became so strained that producers insisted Murray hire an assistant who could act as a go-between. Murray did as he was told, but hired an assistant who was both deaf and mute and could only communicate via American Sign Language. Ramis later told Entertainment Weekly, That's anti-communication. You know, let's not talk. Following Groundhog Day, Murray and Ramis didn't speak for two decades. In her 2018 book, Ghostbusters Daughter, Life with My Dad, Harold Ramis, the director's daughter, Violet Ramis Steele, shared her memories on their relationship. As she wrote, her father tried not to take it personally, but nevertheless felt stung by Murray's decision to sever all ties with him. According to Steele, Ramis was, in her words, heartbroken, confused, and yet unsurprised by the rejection. Murray finally reached out to Ramis while he lay on his deathbed, having lost the ability to communicate. According to Steele, he paid her father an unannounced visit at 7 a.m., accompanied by a police escort and brandishing donuts. Murray spent the next couple of hours speaking to Ramis. 